Do you ever have trouble remembering words when learning a new language? What? Or find it hard to pick up a new skill when getting started at a new job? Mm -hmm. Memory is so important. If you spend hours researching something and only can remember 25% of the information, it feels like you've wasted most of your day. By having a good memory, you know, if you're studying, then you're obviously going to just be able to learn that bit faster. <laughs> and then you do better in tests. And then say if you're in a work environment, if you're like a new starter and you're able to progress because your memory is good in that training, you're able to retain that information, then you're more likely to get a job promotion too. I've had my own struggles with memory and I'll be sharing my results from a cognitive age test I took a year apart. Today, I've picked out the top 10 most effective nootropics for memory and cognition. I personally tried three of them and I'll be sharing exactly how they affected me and what I experienced. When it comes to the best brain boosters for memory, it's important to keep in mind that different people will have different reactions. Here are the top 10 most popular brain boosters known for their potential memory enhancing effects. Phenylparacetam is a brain boosting compound that falls into the Racetam class of drugs. Some people say it has positive effects on memory and brain function. People often mention improved focus, concentration, and mental clarity when taking phenylparacetam, which could indirectly benefit memory by enhancing overall brain function. So yeah, when I first tried phenylparacetam, I noticed that uh, yeah, I was more focused, but it wasn't overwhelming, say when I take something like Ritalin for ADHD, where you really get this like very kind of sharp feeling that hits you. Whereas phenylparacetam, it's more of a gradual thing that you, you notice during the day that you're just able to sit there and focus with tasks. Bacopa mineri, a herb used in traditional Ayurvedic medicine, is said to help with memory and brain function. Research suggests it may improve memory formation and retention. Next up, we have lion's mane mushroom, which has been gaining a lot of popularity lately. It contains compounds that may stimulate the growth of brain cells and enhance cognitive function, potentially improving memory. Yeah, of course, I've done some lion's mane. Again, it's not overwhelming, but it's just that kind of, um, gives you that like subtle boost in um, kind of motivation and focus, but nothing overwhelming and no jitteriness. <laughs> Ginkgo biloba is believed to improve blood flow to the brain and have antioxidant properties, which may benefit memory and brain function, especially in older adults. I was getting younger than everybody else. Another herb on our list is Rhodiola rosea, which is thought to reduce fatigue and improve brain function, including memory by modulating stress response mechanisms. N-acetyl-L-carnitine, or Alcar, is an amino acid derivative that crosses the blood-brain barrier, making it more bioavailable than just regular L-carnitine. Alcar may enhance mitochondrial function, potentially improving memory and brain function. Acetylcholine is a precursor to acetylcholine, a neurotransmitter involved in memory and learning. It may support memory function and overall brain health. Phosphatidylserine is a phospholipid that plays a role in cell structure and signaling in the brain. It may support memory, attention and brain function. Omega-3 fatty acids found in fish oil supplements are essential for brain health and may support memory and brain function. Look for versions with high amounts of DHA as this is the most important type of the two. Uridine is a naturally occurring nucleotide that plays a role in various physiological processes including the synthesis of RNA and the production of neurotransmitters. A 2008 study suggests that uridine may have cognitive enhancing effects potentially and benefiting memory function. So enough with general information, let's talk about my own results. I was looking for it. Last year, I did a cognitive age test at 36 and I was coming in four years older than chronological age with areas of my memory being my weakest point. Doing the test a year later, I'd reverse my cognitive age by a whopping 11 years. 11! Taking into account that I'm now a year older too. In particular, my memory had improved, so I decided to do this cognitive age test, and being a year before, I was underwhelmed with the results, me being four years older than my chronological age, and so I was a bit worried doing it, and when I actually did it, I couldn't believe it that I'd actually reversed it by 11 years. So let's explore what made the difference. At the time of the second test, I was coming to the end of a phenylparacetam cycle. You might be asking, what exactly is phenylparacetam? What the hell is even that? Well, it's chemically related to paracetam, but it has a phenyl group added to its structure, which enhances its bioavailability and potency and is able to cross the blood-brain barrier. 
Paracetam has been used for decades assisting with cognitive decline. While research on phenylparacetam is ongoing and limited compared to other nootropics, it is believed to offer several potential benefits for brain function. The typical doses range from 100 to 200 milligrams. I did the maximum along with extra choline in my diet as your acetylcholine will be used up faster by any kind of these race terms. Remember from earlier, acetylcholine is an important neurotransmitter involved in memory and learning. So I tried phenylparacetam six months ago. I wanted to improve my sleep simultaneously and that's where I noticed that it had a synergistic effect where by improving that sleep quality, by taking the phenylparacetam, I was really able just to uh, take on new tasks, learn things easier, my memory is better, just across the board, everything was improved. My brain is better than everybody's! <laughs> Here are the top five benefits that I experienced. Enhanced cognitive function. Phrenal paracetam improved my memory, focus, concentration, and mental clarity. It made me more alert and improved my cognitive performance. Stimulation and potential for ADHD. It provided a stimulant-like effect without the jitteriness or anxiety often associated with traditional stimulants. This helped me stay motivated and productive. Neuroprotective effects. Studies suggest that phenylparacetam may protect brain cells from damage, potentially slowing down age-related cognitive decline and protecting against neurogenitive diseases. Increased dopamine receptor sensitivity. Phenylparacetam enhanced the sensitivity of dopamine receptors in the brain, which improved my mood and motivation. Enhanced physical performance. Some athletes use phenylparacetam to improve physical performance due to its stimulant effects and potential benefits for endurance, stamina, and resistance to fatigue. Just a heads up, there are some things to consider before trying out phenylparacetam. It can mess with neurotransmitters in the brain like dopamine and serotonin. If you've got conditions like bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, or severe anxiety, it might make your symptoms worse. If you have heart issues like hypertension, heart disease, or arrhythmias, be careful because it can act like a stimulant on your heart, increasing your heart rate and blood pressure. There's not much evidence on how it affects seizures, so if you have a seizure disorder, it's best to be cautious. Also, keep an eye out for any allergic reactions like rash, itching or swelling, trouble breathing, and stop using it if you notice any of these. And hey, this advice applies to the other two supplements I'm gonna go into next. Another supplement I take is uridine. Here we go. I had actually done an epigenetic test before starting it and found out my body's uridine levels were in the bottom 26th percentile for my age, which contributes to my positive response to taking it. Doses of uridine monophosphate start from 250 milligrams daily or as high as 600 milligrams split into two doses over the day. Currently, that's what I'm on. Uridine may help with memory in a few ways. Neurotransmitter modulation. Uridine is involved in making neurotransmitters like acetylcholine and dopamine, which are important for memory formation and retention. Enhancement of synaptic and mitochondrial function. Uridine might help with the growth and maintenance of synapses, the connections between neurons, which are crucial for memory formation and synaptic plasticity. A study from 2022 also showed that it supports mitochondrial function, which is important for providing energy to brain cells and maintaining overall brain health. Uridine's anti-inflammatory properties might help protect against cognitive decline and support memory function since chronic brain inflammation has been linked to memory impairment and cognitive decline. Uridine supplements are usually safe, but it's worth knowing about a few things. First, if you have bipolar disorder or prone to manic episodes, uridine might not be the best for you since it could mess with dopamine levels and make things worse. Also, if you're taking any meds that affect your brain's chemistry like mood disorders or neurological conditions, check with a doctor before adding uridine to your routine. And if you've got liver or kidney issues, uridine might not work the way it's supposed to, just something to keep in mind. I mentioned lion's mane previously. This is another one I take. For me, it's helped me in two different ways. Genetically, I happen to be a slow metabolizer of caffeine, and in the past, I would drink coffee later in the day, which impacted my sleep quality. By switching to lion's mane to avoid that afternoon energy slump, I managed to increase my restorative sleep by a massive 50 minutes. <laughs> Your restorative sleep is classified as REM and deep sleep. So aside from these indirect benefits, let's talk about what lion's mane actually is. Lion's mane is a type of mushroom with long shaggy spines that resemble the mane of a lion, 
hence its name. It's an edible and medicinal mushroom that has been used for centuries in traditional Chinese medicine and Japanese cuisine. It's renowned for its potential health benefits, particularly its purported ability to support brain health and cognitive function. A study from 2013 suggests it may promote nerve growth factor or NGF production in the brain, which could potentially help with neuroprotection, memory, and overall cognitive function. Additionally, lion's mane is believed to have anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties, which could contribute to its potential health benefits. Lion's mane can be taken up to three times per day, though it is not recommended to exceed this limit. Daily dosages of 250 to 750 milligrams have been shown to be efficacious. So I would do 750 milligrams of lion's mane, so I'll do that just during the week. And just as and when, I mean, I might do it for a few weeks and then just have a little break. It's just, uh, yeah, if I've got a lot on my plate and then I obviously want to be able to sleep well, so I'm, I kind of cut, stop the caffeine. For me, it helps with focus, but puts me in a calm state of mind, quite the opposite to that double espresso. If you're thinking about trying lion's mane, there's a few things to consider. If you're allergic to mushrooms, it's best to stay clear of lion's mane supplements to avoid any allergic reactions. I hate mushrooms. Also, if you have blood clotting issues or taking blood thinning medications, it's a good idea to be cautious or consult a healthcare professional before trying lion's mane. If you have a surgery coming up, it's recommended to stop taking lion's mane at least two weeks beforehand to lower the risk of bleeding during the procedure. And if you have an autoimmune disease or are on certain medications, it's crucial to chat with your healthcare provider before adding lion's mane to your routine. Your memory is very much a malleable thing and improvements can be made. Aside from testing my cognitive age, I've noticed that my word recall is definitely enhanced. A good example, being in a big meeting and you're overloaded with a lot of names at once, subconsciously, I'm able to retain them that bit better. It's like my subconscious memory has become more robust. Also, I'm noticing that long technical words are easier to recall and by them being on the tip of my tongue, people are commenting that I'm actually talking faster now too. There's a lot that can be done to get a better memory, both in terms of lifestyle and supplements. I've only scratched the surface today, but I hope my story has been helpful. If you like that video, here's another interesting one on supplements that can boost focus.